Hi everyone, um, we're going to kick off this session. Um, if those who don't know me, my name is Katie and I am Head of Volunteering here at Community Southwark. Um, for those who don't know Community Southwark, we are the umbrella body for the voluntary and community sector in Southwark. We support charities, community groups and individuals through capacity building, volunteering and social action. We want Southwark communities that have the ability and opportunities to fulfil and exceed their potential. We are determined to achieve this by creating strong foundations that support all voluntary and community organisations, communities and individuals in Southwark to work together to improve practice, shape futures and change lives. And so at the core of this ambition lies social action. To us, it means supporting and enabling others to take steps to change the things in Southwark and to introduce new ideas and ways of working that benefits everyone. So that's a bit from me. I'm just going to pass on to Sari, um, who's also from Community Southwark, and she will give an overview of this session. Thanks, Sari. Um, hi there. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name's Sari. I am an engagement officer at Community Southwark. I hope that you can see my screen. Yes. Um, so I work also on a project which works with TRAs, patient groups and residents in Camberwell. Um, so we have only an hour for this section of uh, this session. So we've kept it nice and concise because um, it's only the beginning of conversation. And the crux of it is that we want to come out of the session with and the day with some clear ideas about organising better. So we're going to start with some practicalities in terms of the resources that we have available, where to access them, how to use them. And for those of you that have already engaged in these, we'll be asking for feedback and for what more you want later. Then we're going to go to some um, brilliant speakers from the area who have been doing really great work building up the support and resources and capacity of their communities and also really focus on this thing of um, linking with each other, which we know that a lot of you really want to do. Then uh, we're going to start thinking through together how you want to link with each other, what resources or platforms you need, how, how we can help you link and grow and collaborate, etc. We're going to use a um, polling, a very easy to use polling um, platform for this, which my colleague Miles is going to tell you about how to use. We're going to finish with another speaker from Greater London Authority um, who works in volunteering in London, and she's going to give us more of an overarching perspective on volunteering in the capital. And finally, we're gonna close with some next steps for us all to take away, um, so that it's really a useful session. And uh, yeah, I'll pass on to my colleague, Miles, who's gonna go over ground rules and, and some other things. Hello there, uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, um, my name is Miles Thorpe, and uh, like Sari, I'm a community engagement officer um, at Community Southwark. Um, so I principally work on the um, project slash website Southwark Can, um, which is a social engagement project, um, but I also help run and support um, various campaigns and initiatives around the borough as and when they arise. Um, like Sari said, I'll just quickly touch upon some ground rules. Uh, the first of those being, like Sari said, is that we're on a, a tight schedule, so this applies to speakers and to panellists, um, so just be a bit mindful of the, the timings of the session, keep it nice and short and concise. Um, and then to our our viewers um so if you want if you have any technical questions use the chat function at the bottom of the screen so if there's anything that you um if you're having problems use that one and if you have any q and a's uh use the q and a function instead um, and that will come to us and we'll be monitoring that and answering your questions as well throughout the course of this um throughout the course of the session and the final point to note on the ground rules is this applies to absolutely everybody is to be just be nice uh, in your messages uh, in the chat Q and A's and panelists everybody uh, keep it all pleasant we want communities that can cooperate and uh, just try and keep things like political tones uh, undertones sorry to a minimum and uh, and just for um, panelists as well um, while uh, while you're not speaking just make sure that you're on mute. Um, now, just lastly, before I go on, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Um, if everyone could just get up on their screen, um, so if you've got a mobile phone handy, 
and um, we'd prefer if you did this on your mobile phone so that you can keep um, the so you can keep the chat up on your screen but you can open a web browser so if you go onto your mobile phone web browser so google chrome or something like that and type in just if you see on the left hand side vvox.app you don't need to download anything um, so if you go onto vvox.app, um, but we'll progress onto this a little bit later and I'll explain some more um, about what we're using vvox for. Uh, one second, just need to stop the share. Um, so I'm now going to hand you over to Katie, who's going to talk to you a little bit about volunteering. I think Katie, you might need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Technical issues. Okay, so um, since, since lockdown, uh, Community Southwark have been very busy, as to I'm sure you all have been. Um, for those who don't know Community Southwark's volunteering department, we signpost, support, advise, train organisations of volunteers and continuously champion volunteering throughout the borough. We also run a volunteer advice service for volunteers matching and signposting people to volunteering opportunities. Um, as you are, are all aware, as soon as coronavirus hit, the, um, the landscape of volunteering changed massively and we all had to navigate the new ways of working and serving our community. Um, sadly, lots of uh, many organisations could no longer open their doors with many of their staff being furloughed um, and their volunteering services temporarily on hold. And for other organisations, particularly those working with the vulnerable people, um, they've been completely inundated with these incredible cohort of volunteers wanting to give their time as well as receiving new beneficiaries to add to their books. So many of these organisations have reached full capacity um, and now is the time for us to work together to find a place for all these incredible, engaged and passionate individuals who want to volunteer. Um, we've seen a huge rise of mutual aid groups volunteering around the clock in their prospective wards in Southwark, showing incredible community spirit, helping those in need. And here at Community Southwark, we've supported over around 60 mutual aid groups since lockdown. Um, we've been really lucky um, that we've been given a huge amount of support from a corporate called ZS Associates, um, who have built us a brand new volunteering database that will not only help us at Community Southwark, but will also allow the organisations and volunteers journey to be more effective. So I'm just going to share with you, bear with me. So I'm just going to share with you what these forms will look like for volunteers and then for organisations. So hopefully you can see my screen. If Miles or Sari can't, then they can let me know. Um, okay, so this is the brand new sign up form for volunteers. So if you're really interested in volunteering, then you can sign up to this form. The links to these forms are in your handout and also they will be given to you after this event in our um, post uh, email that we'll be sending out to you. So you can fill out this volunteer form and the idea is to, for you to write down all, um, all of your interests, what you want to do, and we can match with the correct organisation. This is for the volunteer. And then for the organisation, this is the role description form. So you will give us all the information about your role and what is needed um, and how we can match the right volunteer for you with um, your role that you are advertising. This all then goes on to our website in a lovely uh, new and improved way and um, it'll be a really good pathway for both organisations and volunteers. So some of you, um, bear with me one second, a few technical issues. So some of you might be aware it's Volunteers Week, um, which usually is a chance to celebrate the incredible volunteers across the country. However, Volunteers Week have decided it would be inappropriate to go ahead with many of the things that they would usually do around this time. They've decided that instead of a celebration, it would be a chance to say a huge thank you, um, which is hugely important, particularly given the current climate. So, just going to share my screen again. 
so we would really like um for you uh volunteers individuals your community to send us a photo of you with your hand with a thank you on it um, and you can send that to volunteering at communitysouthwark.org. Again, this, is, um, this will be in the um, post-conference email that will come to you. Um, so we really, really would like you to share your photos, send them to us, and we can kind of share and show all these um, during Volunteers Week next week. So um, I also just wanted to take this opportunity to let you know that we have recruited a new volunteer advice service officer called Elizabeth, and she'll be working alongside myself, supporting the volunteers and organisations across the borough. So we would like to welcome Elizabeth. Um, this, this sort of pandemic has seen so many people come together who really want to give their time to help through volunteering. And, um, you know, eventually when people go back to their regular lives, we really want to keep this volunteering legacy going. And we're all here to make sure this happens and um, collaboratively working with all of you. So um, our details are on the handout and we will also um, be sent round after, like mentioned. So please do get in contact with us and look out for our next steps and work and planning for moving forward. Um, I'm going to be handing over to Steve, our Partnership and Policies Officer, now. Thank you very much, everyone. Are you there? Hello. Hi. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm just going to spend a few moments talking about safeguarding. Uh, many communities have come together to support their more vulnerable friends and neighbours over the months since the COVID outbreak. One essential feature of this great upswing and goodwill is to ensure that things go as planned and to minimise any harm or negative impacts that the groups might have or observe on supported individuals, volunteers, and other people that they might encounter. To assist communities and groups, we swiftly produce short guidance on managing risk manage risk automatically and constantly all of the time but for these roles it needs to be undertaken in a formal way and recorded it doesn't have to be long and complex we ensure that you think through all of the roles and tasks and how they are carried out where by who when and how consider what could possibly go wrong and how that risk can be removed or reduced rank the risks I'm in so order sorry I'm just stop you there steve there's been a bit of a sound issue for you so if you could just maybe i yeah. think step away from the microphone a little bit and it might help with having a lot of issues with your sound or if you've got a um have you got a sound you know microphone no. try again and let's see if that will work let me just try the um Does that sound better? I say go ahead and maybe it might get better. Let's see. Okay, um, so consider the risks. Um, safeguarding is going to be formed part of your risk assessment. And so you are looking to ensure the well-being of both volunteers and beneficiaries. Make sure that you have a form of vetting in place with strict boundaries and behaviours. Again, Okay, I'm going to turn the video off, see if that helps. Does that sound better? No? Yeah. I'm afraid not, Steve. Okay, well, I think I'll get it. It's, it's fine. If, there, if there's an audio issue, we can, we can move on to me. I, I don't mind. We move on and we could bring Steve back. Yeah, later, sure. Steve. Okay. Um, well, this is very unexpected. Um, so uh, so in, in my section, um, I'm just gonna briefly run through um, the Southwark CAN projects that I mentioned earlier and, and also touch upon the web resources um, that we've made available. Um, and these kind of reflect on what Steve was talking about anyway. So um, I can just signpost you um, if there's still more technical issues. And then I'll also walk through the community maps that we've, um, that we've put together. Uh, so I'm just gonna share my screen. So bear with me one moment. Um, 
so uh, this here, what you should be able to see now is um, the Southwark Can homepage. So just to give you a bit of a broad um, understanding of what the website's about, it is a social action initiative. So I'm just going to quickly, very quickly go onto the about page. I wish my internet would go a bit faster. Um, and uh, so the, there's three sort of main premises to get the community involved, raise awareness and to inform. Um, so this is what I essentially work on. Uh, we have created a number of COVID-19 resources, uh, which you can get just on the right hand side here. Um, sorry, I should mention, which I didn't mention, the, the website URL is southwarkcan.communitysouthwark.org. Um, it's not a huge website, so you will be able to click around and find everything. But um, on the right hand side of the home page, there's COVID-19 resources. So that's where we're going for this session. Um, so I just want to quickly show you, um, Steve would have been talking about um, these guides, which you're able to download. So we've got payment exchange options, safeguarding and risk assessment. Um, and then we've got the volunteer opportunity. So this will also link up to what Katie was um, discussing earlier. Um, so this will have volunteering opportunities, principally to begin with, with COVID-19. Uh, we've also got some video tutorials on safeguarding and risk assessment, which you can watch at your own, uh, whenever you feel like it, it's on demand. Uh, we've uploaded them to YouTube for you. And um, there's also some more broad help um, for uh, Southwark residents on things like housing, info for businesses. Um, in particular, we would recommend contacting Citizens Advice because um, they've got really good help on things like universal credit. Um, housing and all sorts of things. Um, so that was what I think Steve was mostly going to go into and I'll move now on to the map section. Um, so if we go on to the COVID-19 resources, we have, if we click on here, we've got the COVID-19 community maps. Uh, just wait for that to load. So that's community, uh, sorry, southwarkcan.communitysouthwark.org forward slash maps. Um, and uh, like Katie said earlier, these will all be available um, in our handout that we'll be providing uh, later, later on after the um, conference is finished. Uh, so we have two principal maps. We've got the COVID-19 services map and we've got the Southwark Food Action Alliance food resources. So the, these maps essentially um, organise sort of the geographic location of services um, that are offered by charities around the borough. So we'll click on here on the COVID-19 resources map and essentially what this does, which I and a team put together, um, are all of the COVID-19 services that are available in the borough. So we've got uh, voluntary and community support, mutual aid groups, which many of you will be a part of. Um, we're also in the process of uploading local web resources and tenants and residents associations, but I'll take them off because there's nothing there quite yet. Um, so just briefly, um, we have got all of these options here on the left hand side. So there's uh, sorry, virtual meets and activities. You can see all of those there. I don't I won't go through all of them. Um, so you can toggle these on and off. So essentially, if you do that, um, it will filter all of the um, resources on the map. Now, I understand that that might seem a little bit daunting. Um, so on this main web page, main web page, um, I have broken down all of the um, all of the categories of service. So let's click on mental health and well-being, for example. Um, and that will set pre-filters on the map. <laughs> it usually does, uh, it's because I've zoomed out, so that's um, sort of typically a, um, a um a post has arrived sorry um <laughs> the, yeah, thank you sorry sorry everyone uh, dhl has uh, delivered a, an item for me um so i've lost my train of thought right and we actively encourage um we actively encourage organizations with services to contribute on the map so there's an add contribution button here um so i clicked off that quite quickly so you can add your contribution and just add it through the web form um, and there's a tutorial at the bottom of that initial Southern Can web page, which shows you how to do that. Um, so you might notice on the map uh, that multiple chari uh, charities appear several times. So if a charity has three services, the charity will appear three times for each service. So 
this is a really good resource if you're struggling and need help that you can access here this and see what's around you and uh, we encourage you to contact people with, if necessary and i'll just quickly um i hope i'm doing okay for time um i'll just quickly touch upon uh the southwark food action alliance map bear with just one second while it loads Zoom time. no i haven't um so we've got local delivery services, uh, emergency food surplus, low cost food and distribution hubs. Um, so I've, and I've also just got a message on my screen saying my internet connection's unstable. So apologies if I go a bit funny sounding, if I sound a bit robotic. Um, so again, we've got categories on the left um, and you can use this to refer yourself. Again, we encourage organizations who have food services to add themselves to this map because it's really helpful. Um, I will say though that you, um, if you do use the Southwark Food Action Alliance food map if you're an organisation signing up, um, just make sure you go on to southwarkfoodaction.org, that's southwarkfoodaction.org to sign up as a member there, um, just so that you can get kept in the loop with communications and be invited to meetings and so we can kind of put a face to a name and build relationships. Um, and then I suppose finally, uh, I. Sari will touch on this at the very end of the conference. I am very nearly finished, don't worry. Um, just got some, you can see information on your local neighborhoods here. And we've got a number of networks here which you can join such as the Southwark LGBT network, small groups network, and the creative network, which is another really popular one. Uh, Sari will expand on that later on. Um, and, uh, yeah, everything that I've spoken about will be in our handout. So I'm going to now hand over to Sari for the Q&A. Thank you very much. Hi, thanks, Miles. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go on to a couple of speakers. Um, first of all, we have got uh, Chris Claridge, who's chair of SGTO, which is Southwark Group of Tenants Organisations, and Dario Blake, who is a board member on this. Um, and we're just very pleased to have them here. So I'm going to hand over to them for five minutes or up to five minutes. And if anyone has any questions, if you could type it in the Q&A box at the bottom, not the chat box, the Q&A box. And we'll have time for a couple of questions after their um, talk. And then we'll move on to our next speaker, Felicia. OK, so I'll hand it over to you, Dario and Chris. If you unmute, unmute yourselves. I'm muted. <laughs> Thank you. Is the, uh, can I hear Dario? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. So, yeah, as, as has been said, my name's Chris Claridge. I'm a council tenant and I'm chair of the Southern Group of Tenants Organisations. As the last remaining funded tenants federation in London, the SGTO represents over 50,000 tenants who either rent or lease their homes from the London Borough of Southwark. The Federation was formed over 40 years ago <coughs> by people who lived on council estates who had formed tenants associations who wanted to strengthen their impact by speaking as one voice about their rights as tenants and calling the council to account on major issues such as housing management, rents, etc. We are a charity and at present we're funded through the housing revenue account, which is basically our rents. Um, and we are, in effect, Southwark Tenants Trade Union. I'm going to hand over to Dario. Okay, um, so I wanted Chris uh, to go uh, before me because my journey uh, within the tenants movement has been uh, comparatively quite short compared to the illustrious history of Chris. Um, however, hopefully my journey captures uh, where we are, uh, where we could go, and uh, how we must be at the heart of social action and community volunteering for it to flourish and not simply return to normal. So apologies if I seem really robotic, I'm terrible at keeping the time frame, so I've bullet pointed everything. Uh, so uh, before all of this, I was working as a company secretary, um, basically corporate governance. Um, long story short, uh, I, I wasn't very good, uh, but more importantly, I felt I had no real legacy beyond uh, pretty Excel sheets. So I asked myself, uh, what do I, uh, sorry, what, what would I do if money wasn't an object? So then, like any sensible person, I quit my only source of money and began answering that very question. I knew I wanted to help people, but I wasn't quite sure how. I then thought back to a lady named Joan, who once came to my mom's flat in the dead of the night and helped us with a leak. She not only helped us with that leak, but fought the council for compensation and got my mom 
a new home offer. We stayed, we loved the area. Um, this, this lady was the chair of my local T TRA, Tennis and Residence Association. Uh, next step, so, uh, was for me to become a chair myself. Uh, to do this, I needed to seek uh, an elected mandate from my local community and convince three other people to do exactly the same. So I then put my face on the leaflet with some inspiring words of, my, um, of what aspirations I had for my local community uh, and put it out to about 700 households within, within my estate. Uh, long story short, we were victorious and we got elected to our positions, yay. Um, but that was just a start. Uh, where, without a nationally galvanizing virus, local participation was hard to come by, especially with a socio, socioeconomically deprived, socially, especially within a socioeconomically deprived area. So to tackle this, my heroic predecessor, Joan, uh, during her time had done many things, but one notable thing she had done uh, was to expand our constituted reach to surrounding streets on the basis that what happened in our community also affected their community. Inspired by this, I dreamt up a, a futuristic kind of a next step for TRAs that, um, that wasn't just connected to local streets, but to all of our local stakeholders, including local institutions like schools, et cetera, uh, local groups, charities, et cetera. Um, when COVID struck, our group was flooded with help. Uh, uh, it vindicated that future that I dreamt up um, as my TRA became an authentic, knowledgeable central hub to instigate and direct social action and community volunteering within our community. So to conclude, um, my belief is that Parachuting in groups and uh, volunteering is wonderful and does a world of good. But when you leave that positive action for it to be sustained, I truly believe that local TRAs must be at the heart of that change. Thank you so much, Dario. Go Dario, is someone on the chat says. Um, and totally true. And uh, I think that's um, really inspiring. And I think one of the big things we want um, everyone to know is more all the volunteers and all mutual aid groups and all of the kind of community action groups about linking up how important TRAs are in these movements. You've been there already and you are carrying on. One of the questions we'll be asking later is um, whether, you know, whether people want support with setting up their own TRAs or linking in. And you can always contact SGTO um, to find out all your local TRAs and, and how to get in contact with them. Um, I just have one quick question here. Um, for either of you, Chris or Dario, which is asking whether SGTO uh, represents housing association tenants. Chris, do you know that or Dario? Um, <clears throat> at the moment, um, it doesn't specifically uh, represent housing association tenants um, because our, our being is, is funded uh, through council tenant um, rents. Um, but we are very anxious to expand this to um, housing associations and, and basically um, private tenants and basically anybody um, who rents um, who needs support. <clears throat> so this is something we're working at and you've given out our information and we'd love anybody from a housing association to actually get in touch with us so we can, we can talk this through further. I don't know if Dario wants to add to that. Yeah, can I add to that? So we have a housing association on the edge of our estate and um, they set up their own, um, their own association or whatnot with, along with their housing association. And we work very kind of collaboratively with them in that kind of spirit of collaboration that we're trying to appeal to in this chat. Uh, they use our, um, our community hall or whatnot. And um, whenever we're doing uh, any action on the estate, I, I definitely include them in, in what we do. So despite there not being a kind of a formal relationship, there is definitely, a, um, uh, possibility and existing relationships with um, uh, with housing associations. And is it is true that any residents can get together, Chris or Dario, and create their own um, residents association? It won't be in quite the same status as a TRA. Is that correct? Absolutely. If, if, um, and part of the role of the SGTO is actually to um, encourage people to form such groups so that they they have a voice. Great. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, I'm going to welcome now Felicia Boshirin from um, Central Southwark Community, uh, sorry, Central Southwark, yeah, Community Hub. Um, Felicia created this hub and um, it's a food bank, but so much more. So I'm just going to hand straight over to Felicia. Um, hi, Felicia. Hi, sorry. Thank you so much. 
this has been really awesome. I've got carried away listening to all the panelists that you've got, Dario and Chris. Wow. Thank you all so much for doing your part in our community. And so, yes, um, I'm Felicia Boshirin. I am the developer, founder, or whatever, of Obstetrics of the Community Hub. Um, I managed the previous food bank in Southwark for six years, and I actually noticed that there was a gap. Um, the gap is that people came back after the designated period, and they'll come back not because they've sorted their problems out, they come back because they need to, they need food, um, and they'll go elsewhere and search for food and come back when they were allowed to. So what I wanted to look at is why, and the why is what's the underlying cause. I think it's not very different from where we are. Um, COVID is new to us, yes, but for a lot of those who um, I experienced the particular challenges, a, a number of those issues have stemmed from previous uh, how our company set, our, what was the employment records of where they were working, what systems do we have in place? And it is those systems that I think I'm hoping, I'm really praying that what COVID has highlighted, we will be able to address. So as a food bank, we address the underlying cause. And the underlying cause are the range from universal credit, so no recourse to public funds, mental health. And we see clients through those. So when they come to us, we assess their needs and we agree a pattern of supporting them. I think one of the things I got managing the food bank for six years is that if somebody needs food and you're not guaranteeing them or at least reassuring them that there's a way of them getting that food, it would be difficult for you to expect them to address the issue. Because while uh, they've got this need, that will always become, be the first priority. This will be their first need. So what we do, we do offer them, we assess them and, and offer them a, a package of how they can get food and continue to support them through a, through a care package model to address that issue with a number of local local organisations like um, Southern Law Centre, Citizens Advice, and other agencies beyond Southern. And so we look at the issues and work with them to address that. While they're addressing those issues, they can continue to receive our service at the agreed level that we've offered. Until COVID-19, <laughs> um, I don't recognise the organisation, because it's changed and continues to change to meet the needs of our local people. At the moment, we are one of the hubs in Southwark. We do delivery, but we continue to see our clients face to face. I think it's important for me to explain why, because I know I've been challenged by a number of people about this. How can you see people when you work in the distance? Believe it or not, in our borough, there's a number of different people and there are some that will not engage and cannot engage with normal, what seems a normal uh, pro systems. One, they don't understand it, or two, they're just not in that place to do so. So they're not going to phone community hub, they're not going to um, go online, not that they don't go online, but not for that, because they just don't understand it. What we've seen so far is that our services, we supported on an average, uh, average of 15 clients because we do work one-to-one -one with them uh, uh, addressing the underlying cause. However, that level has increased to so over 320. So we've seen a big change. And I can assure you in every one of those clients we've seen, they, not everyone, but at least 70% of them will not access normal uh, would, wouldn't contact the council for a start they will not be doing that and so we've stayed open we open up oh we, we run a, a six session service on a monday to friday two on a tuesday and we still offer delivery we've done so with a number of wonderful volunteers as everyone has alluded to we've had awesome contributions from people around local people financially and otherwise volunteers they've been awesome people running in to donate foods and to ensure that we have things we, we have the support and the capacity to meet the needs that we're seeing and experiencing i want to say thank you <laughs> thanks Southern, Felicia. Southern. and um 
I have to, thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Thanks. Sorry, I have to interrupt there. Um, but thank you so much for you for your work and and um, that's really inspiring. And if anyone can get in touch with Felicia afterwards um, with any questions, um, that would be great. And uh, we'll be sending out, I believe, um, people's contact details. So um, I'm going to um, hand back over to Steve quickly. Hopefully, his uh, sound is better than it was. And um, yeah, people are saying thank you in the chat, Felicia, thanks. Um, Steve, can you go ahead? Yeah, can you hear me better this time? Yes. Great, um, well, I'm gonna try and skip through this very rapidly. Um, I was saying look, communities have come together um, to support friends and neighbors over the months, and that's been a fantastic. One of the essential features of this is to make sure that people remain safe uh, while they're doing these activities. That's the volunteers themselves and the beneficiaries. Um, so we produce some very uh, short guidance on managing risk. We all do it automatically and constantly all of the time, but for these purposes, it needs to be done in a more formal way. It doesn't have to be long or complex, but think about the tasks you're doing, where they're carried out, by who, when and how. Um, and just consider what could possibly go wrong and then try and mitigate those risks as far as you can. Other questions we've got have been around safeguarding, which is extremely important. Um, and you're looking to maintain the welfare of both staff and volu uh, of volunteers and beneficiaries. Make sure you have some kind of vetting system in place and strict boundaries for behaviours. Again, we've set out in our guidance types of abuse, which you can look through, um, and how to spot those signs of abuse. Um, remember, you're not investigating or making judgments, but reporting on what you may see or witness. Um, safeguarding is not just for some people, it's for everybody. So everyone, all of your volunteers are involved in that kind of process and must understand the policies and procedures. Um, we also know that handling payments for shopping has been an issue that people have asked us about. And again, we provide uh, some short guidance on that, which I think you uh, will find uh, helpful. All these documents need to be living documents so you can develop them and build on them with your experiences and knowledge as you go through this. Um, but I say all our stuff is on the website and I'll be around. So if anyone's got any questions, we can answer those. So thank you very much. Great. I think uh, it's my turn now. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we were, um, I mentioned that we were going to be doing some polling. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now and it's going to take us to the VBOX poll. So I'll just go a bit through a bit more about how uh, how you can join that. So uh, if you haven't already, um, open your mobile phone browser, ideally your mobile phone browser, um, or if you don't have access to your mobile phone, go on to an internet browser and then just touch vvox.app. I know it says app, but you don't actually have to download anything. And then once you're on that web page, uh, type the ID in. So the ID is just on the left hand side of the screen now. It's 17907316. Um, so I'm just going to give you about 10 seconds just to do that and then we'll begin with our first test poll uh, see how we're doing. Um, so essentially the premise of what we are, um, we're using this section um, just to find out how we can stay connected to you and how, you can, how we can help you stay connected um, among uh, each other. So during the COVID-19 um, lockdown. We've, we've, as an organisation, have really experienced everybody um, like such a, a kind of inspiring. Um, everyone's been have putting their hand up to volunteer, and it's been really nice to see. So we want to keep that going. Um, so we, as an organisation, can provide training and resources. Uh, we can facilitate events. So the kind of the point of these polls is to just find out what it is that we can do that will help you um, on a practical level. So I'm going to do the first test poll now. So, which of the following best describes your current lockdown hair situation? So on your mobile phone, you should be, you should be able to see all six of those answers. Um, so the, uh, the goal is just pick one, and we can see it all live on the screen now. It's jumping around. Ooh. Homemade, yeah, mine's homemade as well. Could be better. 
only 4.5% of people represent the category of bald people. <laughs> okay, we've got 44. I might have to move on from this one uh, just so we can keep some time, but uh, hope you enjoyed that one. So that's that. Uh, so we're going to go on to our first actual poll of the, uh, of the session. Uh, so that one is staying connected. What would you find most useful, a WhatsApp group or a WhatsApp broadcasting group? So anyone who's been involved in mutual aid groups will undoubtedly have been involved in a WhatsApp group. So a WhatsApp group is where everyone can communicate and a, uh, a WhatsApp broadcast group is where it's just one way. So it'll be a select, uh, just a few people broadcasting organization to, sorry, a few people broadcasting information. So if anyone's a part of the mutual aid WhatsApp group that we as Community Southwark have, a uh, very similar principle to that. So I'm just going to let these total up for a little bit. All right, we've got, oh, my maths is terrible. Uh, <laughs> Set seven, ten more, eleven more, something like that. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to give ten more seconds. Okay, so I think that uh, people actually quite like WhatsApp groups and then broadcasting groups, and and then some neither. That's understandable. Um, all depends on. The kind of person you are, I suppose. All right, so I'm going to close that poll now. I'm going to move on to the next one. So before I go into, before I release the next question, um, I'm just going to give a, a summary of the, it, so this one is a word cloud. Um, so a word cloud, the idea of a word cloud is that you summarize your response in one word, in one keyword, think of a keyword. Um, so just some more technical aspects, just because it can be a little bit confusing. Um, is that when you can only type in one word at a time. So just make sure you don't type in words like and or the, because they'll appear in the screen. They don't really give us an idea. So just think of like nouns, ideally. Um, and so if you press space, if you press the space bar or send, that will send it. Um, and if you, if you see something on the screen that you agree with, um, also send that as well, because that will add it to um, the screen uh, and it'll make the words bigger. All right, so staying connected. So provider-led groups and networks of providers for services to particularly, particular groups and affinity groups. Uh, we have PLGs on social action, uh, we've, which is Southern Can, uh, for Creative Network, and uh, which is run by my colleague, Steve, and the Volunteers Managers Network by Casey, and among others. Um, are there, so thinking about your experience, are there any other networks that you would like us to create that you would find useful? So please type your ideas and share them with us below. Have a think. So I think there might be a bit of a technical problem in that it seems to have removed one. Um, just bear in mind, you can also share multiple um, suggestions. Um, just because I realise as well that this one's a thinker, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit longer to come up with answers. So, so far we've got mutual aids. Whoa, the, the words keep moving <laughs> when I start to read one. Um, so there's gardeners, carers, uh, group work, uh, faith, carers, LGBT, I think I might have read some of these out, older, art, non-native, um, PO, peer, fo focus, I guess that meant focus. So we've got some really good suggestions. So we're looking for things that we can ideally create after this that will keep people in connected and also um, help you meet people who have similar interests as well. Um, in a sort of more social action capacity. Um, right, so I'm gonna give about 10, 10 or 15 more seconds on this one.
So some of the um, groups that you guys have mentioned, we already um, have these in place. So that's really great that we can then signpost you to the already existing PLGs. Yeah, and a couple of people are saying that they can't, they haven't been able to enter. They've put their ideas in the chat, which is refugees and children and families as well. Right. Okay, yeah. Thank, thanks very much, yeah. Um, I know that there might be a few technical issues, so I am sorry. Um, it's, it's particularly with this this one, but part, we'll be going back to polls shortly. All right, I'm going to um, I'm going to round. You're a bit little, a bit short for time. <laughs> Just All right, okay. I will. Sorry, I will go ahead. Thanks, Casey. All right. So, staying connected. Would you benefit from attending events based around social action and volunteering? So that could be meeting people. A hundred percent. Yes, or ninety-four. All right, I'm going to just wait for that to catch up a little bit more and then I'll move on. Okay, I'm going to move on from this one. Thanks very much for the responses so far. Um, so the next question is, and this is another word cloud. What kind of events would you find useful? For example, we've got annual conference, fairs, networking events, talks. Um, so just use the space to tell us. And um, sorry, if, if any such, if you're having trouble um, that uh, submitting your answer, just send it over to the chat and sorry can, can read it out. So I'll give, I'll give about 30 seconds for this. Casey, can, is that 30 seconds? Is that enough, do you think? I'm gonna take that as a yes. Great, so we've got groups, training, seminars, networking, networks, webinars, conferences. Great, all really, really good suggestions. Um, all right, I'm just gonna wait for a couple more and then I am going to close the poll. Brilliant, all right, thanks very much. So I'm pretty sure that the next one is another, so, Training, we can offer training on getting involved and making a difference, but do you already know how you can get involved and influence your own community? So when we say that, we mean things like um, how to contact counsellors, how to get on the right mailing lists, um, to hear about consultations, things happening in your area. Um, do you know about the Council's Empowering Communities programme? Um, do you know about Southwark Can? All sorts of things like that. No, I've got a. So most people so far, it's a no. So that's really interesting. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to close this poll and move on now. Thanks very much for everyone who responded. And so this is another word cloud. We offer training in many different areas too. What training sessions would you like to participate in? So that could be on things like money handling, uh, holding your own event, all sorts of things like that. Um, it's a good idea to think now for what kind of things that you've experienced that you've that have kind of held you back in your journey as a volunteer or a mutual aid volunteer. Um, already we've got loads of suggestions, um, anti-racism, community, cooking, health, money, Dementia, safeguarding, rights. That's a good one, housing. Great, I'm gonna give this another, I'll give it another 10 or 15 seconds. Marge, well, you've got two minutes. All right, okay, that, I will get my skates on. All right, thanks Katie. Okay, so the next question is, is Community Southwark and Southwark can have many resources available on their websites? Have you engaged with these at all? Great, okay, I'm going to just give five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, 
and I'll take that answer as representative of everyone here. So we're going to move on to the next poll. We've just had lots of questions and um, we will send out the questions for those who have been unable to um, yeah. access VVOX. So don't worry, you will get your opportunity to let us know. Yeah, we'll, we will do a survey monkey at the end and we can share it with the uh, with the mailing list from this. Um, sorry for the technical issues. Um, just got to get through the last questions. Which of the following resources do you find the most useful? This is a multiple choice, but you, when you select them, you have to press send afterwards. So the safeguarding, funding, community maps, WhatsApp group, money exchange, volunteer best practice, uh, opportunity of volunteers, opportunities page, and I didn't use community Southwark or Southwark Hand resources. I cannot endorse or condone any others, I'm afraid. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna give about five, five, 10 seconds and then we'll move on. All right, brilliant. Okay. It's another Wales cloud. This is the penultimate question. What other resources would you find useful? You can say things that you saw on the previous, um, on the previous question, um, if you'd like us to expand on those. And then, and then so we've got the last question after that, and then we'll move on back on to Sari. So, so far I've got rights, training, legal, great. These are all really great suggestions. I'm just gonna give it about 10 more seconds and then we'll have to move on again because we've got a short time. Great, okay, trusteeships, okay, five, four, Three, two, one. All right, everyone, now it's the final question. Um, would unregistered groups like information or help on how to have constituted status, like tenants, like TRAs or become community interest companies or just plain old charities like Community Southwark or any number of charities in the borough? So we do actually offer training at the moment, so we might move this to online and, um, and we can also have a think about ways to make it more tailored towards mutual aid groups and, and what's best um, in, for keeping those going going forward and how to help you. Um, I think I'll give this another 10 seconds and then we'll, we'll move on. Right, okay, so it's a, a pretty overwhelming yes. It's good to hear. All right, brilliant. I think now that I'm going to close the polls uh, and stop sharing my screen. Uh, and I am delighted that there were no technical issues there. So that's fantastic news. And I'll hand over now to, uh, I think, Sari? Katie. Katie, Katie, it's your turn. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so we're coming to the end of our session and we have our last speaker for the session which is Trudy Johnson from Team London and um, so she's just going to give a bit of an overview from their side. Hi Trudy. Hi Katie, thanks very much for inviting me along um, and thanks everybody, it's been really insightful to hear about the different things that have been going on in Southwark as well. Um, so my name is Trudy Johnston and I work for Team London at the GLA. Team London is the Mayor's programme that focuses on volunteering and social action. Is the sound okay? Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. I thought I just checked, just in case, okay. Um, and we, like pre-COVID, our focus has been on 
Um, we run a couple of programs that get volunteers involved in mass events, but then we also run some funding programs for the sector. We focus on giving some training and support around involving volunteers or funding or trusteeship as well. So my role is kind of how, how can we champion and support volunteering and how can we also support the civil society sector as well. Um, so since the crisis started, we've been working really closely with strategic partners in London. We sit on a board which includes London Council, the Corporation of London, London Funders, to kind of think about how can we gather as much intelligence about what's going on so that we know what we can do that's most useful and supportive at a London-wide and regional level. Um, some of the things that we've been involved in then is the London Community Response Fund, which some of you might have seen. So London funders managed to get together a collaboration of around 50 funders. Um, the Mayor of London contributed five million pounds to this fund, and I think there is about 18 million in total. Um, and we were really keen to do something quite that could get money out quickly to groups because we could see how the need was kind of exploding, you know, it was developing so fast and, and the situation was changing so quickly, we knew that groups needed resources to respond. So we did manage to, to pull that funding together. Um, and I think that around, uh, there's, we've given out around 1,260 grants so far, um, totaling about 14 million pounds, but all the, the funders are still in conversations because we know that this is um, a longer term process and we want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on need and thinking about how can the funding best support so currently um london funders have also just given some money to some regional equalities groups like inclusion london and the ubele initiative because we know that there can be a challenge in funding reaching all sections of civil society and we want those kind of organizations to help make sure that groups that are underrepresented are also able to apply for and access funding um, some of the other things that we've been doing is, Katie mentioned Volunteers Week next week, and usually we would have a small grants pot that would be for organisations to recognise their volunteers. We've kind of pivoted the purpose of that money and, and put it out for people to cover volunteer expenses. So that's kind of just closed and um, we'll be putting out some small grants of up to a thousand pounds there to help people um, to, to, recognize, to cover their volunteer expenses through the crisis. But really it's been incredible to see the um the response from volunteers and to really see how where the biggest difference has happened is at the local level and as, as you know as like dario and chris and felicia all mentioned you're when you're most connected in your communities it's where you can reach people that have the most need um we know at a local level there are lots of different routes into volunteering there's the mutual aid groups there's the local authority hubs there's cvs and volunteer centers and there's also the nhs responders app and so it's how can these different routes collaborate and communicate with each other so that the people that want to give help are able to share their time in the most effective way and the people that need their support are able to, to get what they need kind of quickly and, and kind of supportively. Um, so I think going forward, some of the things that we're looking at, and I saw it's interesting, I saw some of the things that you're thinking about are also some of the things that we're thinking about. So somebody mentioned as lockdown ends, as people start going back to work, how do we make sure that volunteering can continue and that people are engaged? Um, there's going to be some parts of our communities that are shielding and isolating for quite a while. Um, and although we've had a bit, what's been interesting is the complete change in demographics of volunteers over the last two months. So prior to COVID, the average age profile of volunteering in London was in the older age category. And of course, with people having to isolate, that means those people who, who were volunteering in the past aren't necessarily and this isn't universal, but might not be able to contribute as much as they were before. But younger people have had a bit more space in their lives to be able to contribute and take part in volunteering. So what are the kind of systematic and structural things that can enable individuals who are of working age to keep giving time in their communities? Can we speak to employers about thinking of um, volunteering not as kind of three days a year, but leaving work a couple of hours early once a week so you can do a bit of extra shopping for for our neighbours or you know things like this are there ways that we can look at that actually tweaks the kind of setup of 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 our lives in London so that we can encompass volunteering uh, more easily within it um I think we've got lots of challenges ahead um in terms of unemployment and inequality the disproportionate impact on BAME communities and homelessness um, and I think we're focusing on how can we work strategically with partners, how can we make sure that we're leveraging funding to go to the right places, and how can we um, kind of 
hear what's working at a local level and help to en enable where possible the conditions for that to happen. We don't have the expertise on what works at a local level. You do and the mutual aid groups do and the people that kind of are really enabling that support to be delivered are the ones that do that. So we're doing some work at the moment to kind of hear what mutual aid groups are experiencing so that we can then identify what can we do that can support that in the future as well. Um, there's a, I think there's um, an article, I think on the, on the London.gov site, which is there's a transition. I think the government announced that they're developing a transition board for London. So that will be London councils and the mayor and other strategic partners thinking about the, this initial next few months and how we get through this and what needs to kind of be put in place for London, but then there'll be longer term work as well, because we just don't quite know how many phases of, of lockdown there might be or, or what things are going to look like over the next few months. So we're really keen to keep conversations open, really keen to work collaboratively and hear what our partners and the sector feels is important and useful and keep championing the massive impact that the sector is having on supporting people through this crisis. Great, thank you so much, truly. Um, that's really helpful. Um, so I'm aware that we are gonna have to wrap up now. So just wanted to really thank everybody for uh, joining sorry. us. Sorry, I'm so sorry, sorry for interrupting. We've had a few questions for truly. Ah. So we, okay, we actually do don't have time to go through them, but um, please can you uh, send me your questions and I could forward them to, to Truly. Um, I know there was one about funding and um, you, um, one of the questions that was given you, I think you already answered about how you're interacting with mutual aid groups. So I think you already answered that, but sorry, just to highlight that. Sorry, okay. sorry. Cool. Uh, flesh out answers and send that over to Katie to share. So please do share your questions and we can get that. Cool, great. Okay, lovely. Yes, yeah, so thanks to everybody. Um, thank you for our speakers for coming and for people for polling and listening and asking questions. I just really want to, we just really want to make sure that there is some clear next steps. And that's what this whole day and this session is all about, it's kind of moving forward. I think we're all really keen to do that. So you should be able to see my screen with some really clear kind of little next steps. Um, Groups, can you please just join as a member, Community Southwark? It's free as long as you're not for profit and you operate in Southwark, you can do that, mutual aid groups included. Everybody, um, what we wanna do is um, build up our community action network. Any, any activists, volunteers, groups can join this. And this is going to feed into Southwark Voice, which, which is a representative voice for all of the community and voluntary sector at borough level. It can be a lobbying force, it can um, get involved in the talking with decision makers. And also if um, we've got all of these different networks, provider led networks, they're on the community can, uh, the, sorry, the Southwark can website, which um, Miles briefly mentioned before. Um, and so these are all ways to feed into the conversations and, and stay engaged. We're also going to be, um, we also want you to look and engage with the community response maps, make sure you add your groups and your services, make sure you read our report, which we're going to send on um, and with some suggestions and strategies on how we go forward and please feed back to us and just start making more links. You can contact your fellow conference attendees, we'll be sending out um, if anyone has joined the list, we'll be sending that out afterwards. We'll be sending out a pack of information afterwards. And you can also explore on our website on uh, communitycellar.org forward slash organizations um, dash venues. And that has a whole list of all of our members. Um, and so they, those are some kind of concrete next steps. And um, I think that's it. So Marie, thanks everyone. Can I just oh. jump in very, very last moment thing. Um, our, so the, the Community Southwark team, mine, in particular mine, Sari's and Katie's contact details are on the Community Southwark website. Um, if you just find staff, there's a whole list of our, we've got photos, names and our job, uh, job titles and all of our contact details there if you need us, okay? Yeah, and we will be sending um, this survey and uh, out that if anyone didn't um, get, get to answer. Okay, thanks Thank very much for coming everyone.